Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week 31 of my 2021 reads. This week I read quite a few good books, including a lot of picture books. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished The Chosen and the Beautiful by Ni Vo, which is a retelling of The Great Gatsby with a lot of fantasy and queer elements added in. Uh, I actually finished reading this during a reading vlog that I did over last weekend, so I will link that vlog below in case you're interested in that real-time thoughts. But overall, I thought that this was such a well-written book. I loved the writing style, the atmosphere. It was so immersive. I loved the world building. There was all of this really cool magic and you really felt that kind of roaring 20s, lots of excess, lots of drug use and sex and alcohol and all sorts of things, lots of money thrown around. Um, so I think that it did such a good job of capturing that Great Gatsby type feel and it follows that storyline, but we get it from a different perspective. Um, and I think that this is also a queering of that story. Everybody's very, very queer. It's, it's really neat. Um, it's got a lot of adult content, lots and lots of sex and all sorts of other things um, and the magic was very interesting I really liked the magic in this so the writing was gorgeous the atmosphere was wonderful I did think that the ending was not quite as neat as I would have liked it it felt a little bit rushed things didn't quite tie up as neatly as I'd like um, just a couple of loose ends here and there but overall the reading experience was thoroughly enjoyable I gave this four and a half out of five stars Next, I finished Because Internet by Gretchen McCulloch, which is a nonfiction linguistic analysis sort of micro history of the way that we talk online and specifically looking at the way that we speak via text, so informal text such as chat rooms or Twitter or um, texts to each other, things like memes, all of these sorts of internet speak. And the way that McCulloch looks at this is just so brilliant. One, McCulloch is a very funny writer. I found this was such a fun read. It really flew by. I loved it. Um, I also really like, you know, she's a linguist and she uses proper linguistic analysis. Um, so this isn't just somebody who's spouting off on uh, their beliefs or their feelings about the way that people online speak. No, she's doing a proper linguistic analysis of the patterns of speech that are used and it's just brilliant i absolutely loved it um and it's so fascinating just to hear about all of these different sort of generations of internet users and how that affects the way that you interact online and all of the different patterns um things like the different acronyms that people use like lol and what that can mean um, for different generations the types of emojis used the way that memes are used i mean it is absolutely fascinating stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave this five out of five stars. I really highly recommend this for anybody who likes nonfiction. And if I can get my thoughts together, I will try to do a standalone review for this. And then I read three picture books, starting with A Story About Afia by James Berry, illustrated by Anna Cunha. This is absolutely beautifully illustrated. I love the illustrations in it. It is a story about a girl who has a dress, and that dress is a white dress, but every day when she goes out into the world, it takes on the impressions of the different things that she interacts with and sees. It's this fantastical, sweet story um, that maybe has some underlying themes of how we are interacting with the world around us. It is just beautifully illustrated, wonderfully sweet. Um, I think that I could have dealt with maybe just a teensy more depth to the story, but even so, I, I thought this was a wonderful picture book. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Way Back Then by Neil Christopher, illustrated by Germaine Arnaud Talyak. This is a dual language English and Inuit picture book for kids that is uh, telling a bunch of different Inuit myths. Uh, I love mythology and so I was really really having a fun time reading all of these myths. Um, the illustrations also are very very neat. They're done in kind of, kind of a pointillism style um, and it's just telling a bunch of the different 
kind of myths that you would tell to kids um, who are Inuit. And it does have the Inuit language above and then English below. And I thought it was really well done. Um, the myths though, because they're only kind of like a paragraph each and there's so many of them, I was a little sad that I didn't get more depth on each individual myth. But even so, I thought this was a really cool read. I gave it four out of five stars. And lastly, I read Josephine by Patricia Ruby Powell, illustrated by Christian Robinson. This is a children's picture book, which is a biography of Josephine Baker, who was a famous black dancer and singer in the 19. 30s through, I guess, 70s. Um, and she is somebody who kind of couldn't make it so much in the US due to a lot of issues with racism and Jim Crow and all that kind of things. But she went to Paris and was incredibly popular. Um, and she was really, really known for her humor. She was very goofy and her wild dances. She would do the Charleston, all these sorts of things. Um, and I think that this book does a really good job of covering her biography. It's quite long for a children's picture book actually it's about 100 pages um, and the illustrations were fantastic I loved the illustrations for this uh, it, it's just so neat learning about her life and I definitely went and watched a bunch of YouTube videos showing um, Josephine Baker dancing and singing and things like that after I read this um, the, the only thing that I would say about this is that the writing style is almost kind of like very stylized and, and almost poetic but sometimes I found that a little excessive and because it is so long it doesn't actually have illustrations for every page so there's a bunch of pages that are just text which isn't as typical for picture books um, and the content in this is also a little heavy because it really does address quite a few things about racism and prejudice and and even some of the violence that happens uh, because of those things uh, but I really enjoyed this and I gave it four out of five stars Okay, so that is everything that I read this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, if you have any thoughts, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.